So I mentioned in an earlier video that during the total solar eclipse coming up on April 8th, there is a comet that may be visible. The Devil's Comet, the Horned Comet, Comet 12P, Ponds Brooks. Now due to its description and location and orbit, it fits the description of one of the theories suggested about Planet X. One of the scenarios for Planet X, actually one of the better case scenarios for Planet X is that it's a comet, a winged comet or planet that flies through our solar system, swings around our sun and heads back to the outer solar system and isn't seen again for a lengthy period of time. And because of it only being a comet, it wouldn't have much of an impact on the integrity of the Earth, or at all. Now, we are actually living out one of those scenarios. The worst case scenario is that Planet X is a mini constellation. In other words, another star with its own planets orbiting it that crosses paths with our star system, a twin sun, a binary system. That's the worst case scenario because that would definitely impact life here on Earth with devastating effects. I have to say, this thing snuck up on me and maybe a lot of you. Even though they did talk about the comet's presence even last year, you know, a legend is a traditional story or narrative that has been passed down through generations, often orally, within a culture or community. Legends typically feature extraordinary or fantastical elements and are often based on historical events, real people or places, but they are embellished with fictional or mythological elements over time. But when we see with our own eyes the truth, a legend can become historical fact. Comet 12P Pons Brooks, also known simply as Comet Pons Brooks, is a short period Halley Comet in our solar system. There are records for this object being observed in the sky going back to 1385 China and 1457 Italy. Then, in the 19th century, it was independently discovered by two astronomers Jean-Louis Pons and William Robert Brooks. Pons first observed the comet in 1812, while Brooks discovered it in 1883. It's a short period comet, meaning it has a relatively short orbital period around the Sun. Its orbital period is approximately 71.3 to 71.6 years which means it completes one orbit around the sun roughly every 72 years. It's about 30 kilometers, which is the diameter of its nucleus, which can be compared to the size of Mount Everest. Like other comets, Pons Brooks is primarily composed of ice, dust, and rocky material. When it approaches the sun, heat causes the ice to sublimate and releases gas and dust. It has its own mini volcanoes, if that helps you visualize this, that form a bright coma, which is the comet's atmosphere, which drags off the comet to often form a tail. The size of the coma 
and tail can vary depending on factors such as the comet's distance from the sun and its activity level. In June 2024, the comet will reach its closest approach to Earth. Unfortunately, observers in the northern hemisphere will miss the event as the comet won't be visible from that region by then. That's why the best chances to observe the comet is right now, late March and early April. I believe until around the 24th of April. During this period, the comet will be visible in the clear, dark skies above the western horizon after dusk. While there's a possibility to spot it with binoculars or even the naked eye in some cases, the comet's brightness can be unpredictable. You could use an app on your phone that gives you a sky map to help you track the location of where to look exactly. Now, of course, you can go and look into more finer details about the comet. There is something that I actually found very interesting. And that is, there was a book written by Graham Phillips titled The End of Eden. And in this book, Phillips offers the case that civilizations worldwide underwent a transformation towards aggression and monotheism following Earth's passage through the tale of a comet, that one being 12P Pons Brooks in 1500 BC. The book delves into the violent impact of debris from the comet on formerly peaceful cultures such as the Olmec of Mexico and the megalithic people who constructed Stonehenge. He writes that Comet 12P Pons Brooks is set to pass near Earth once more after 3500 years. Even though the published data is 71 years, right? He says that in 1500 BC, as the Earth traversed the comet's tail, as the Earth passed through the debris of the comet, cultures worldwide experienced a sudden surge in aggressive behavior. From India to Central America, civilizations abandoned their peaceful ways and engaged in warfare. Additionally, monotheism, a novel concept at the time, emerged simultaneously across various regions worldwide. Many of these monotheistic religions depicted their god symbolically as a circle with lines extending below, resembling a comet's image. In The End of Eden, Graham Phillips argues that no other explanation exists for these changes besides the presence of the massive comet in Earth's skies. Phillips proposes that debris from the comet's tail contaminated the atmosphere with chemicals known to induce aggressive behavior, leading to a decade of widespread hostility. He explores how the appearance of a celestial body brighter than the moon was interpreted as a significant religious event, a manifestation of a powerful new deity. Now, I don't know exactly what chemicals the author is referring to that would contaminate the earth. Elements like lead and mercury have been known to cause irritability and aggression in humans. So the concept of this is not impossible if the earth comes in contact with debris from a comet depends on the composition of the comet really and what happens to that debris once it hits the earth's atmosphere then the question becomes how much of that debris actually makes it to the surface of the earth after having to pass through its natural defense shield called the atmosphere anything that travels to earth has to go through the burning fires of hell to get through to us Many ancient cultures, including the Greeks, Romans, and Chinese, viewed comets as omens of impending disaster or significant changes. 
The sudden appearance of a comet was often associated with impending wars, natural disasters, or the death of rulers. Pretty much that same way they viewed the eclipse. So there will be two sky phenomena that occur that could be considered bad omens. Some cultures believe that comets were messages from the gods or other supernatural beings. In ancient Mesopotamia, for example, comets were interpreted as signs from the gods and their appearance was often recorded in cuneiform texts. Comets were often seen as symbols of change or transformation. In some cultures, they were associated with the birth or death of kings or the rise and fall of empires or other major historical events. While some cultures viewed comets as supernatural phenomena, others saw them as natural celestial events. Ancient astronomers and civilizations such as Babylonia, Greece, and China observed comets and recorded their appearances, often developing theories about their nature and movements. Comets frequently appeared in the mythology and symbolism of ancient cultures. They were often associated with heroes or other mythical figures and were sometimes depicted in art, literature, religious texts. I uploaded a video about the eclipse and not to get onto a different topic, but I just thought about how NASA plans to launch a series of rockets during the eclipse. Do you know they call those rockets the Apophis rockets? Apophis, also known as Apep. This is a deity in ancient Egyptian mythology associated with chaos, darkness, and destruction. Depicted as a giant serpent or dragon, Apophis represented the forces of disorder and opposition to order and stability in the universe. So, what are they doing? Why are they calling them that? In Egyptian mythology, Apophis was believed to dwell in the Duat, the underworld or realm of the dead, where he sought to undermine the cosmic order and prevent the sun god Ra from completing his nightly journey through the underworld. Ra's journey symbolized the cycle of death and rebirth, with the sun setting each evening and rising again the next morning. Apophis was considered Ra's greatest enemy, constantly threatening to devour him and plunge the world into eternal darkness, you see? To protect Ra and ensure the continuity of light and life, ancient Egyptians performed rituals and spells to repel Apophis and other forces during the nightly journey of the sun god you know, recitations, offerings, symbolic actions to ward off evil and maintain cosmic balance. As the embodiment of chaos and opposition to cosmic order, Apophis represents the threat of disorder that had to be constantly overcome to ensure that life in the universe continued. So, I'm sure there are those who are superstitious enough in a cult-like manner to want to perform a ritual or a spell to somehow magically secure a better future for themselves, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, given the timing of these events, the eclipse, the comet, there's a lot of other crazy things going on. This could very well be an important sign for us, especially if other countries around the world are paying attention to the eclipse that is happening in the US or the comet, which is a global phenomenon. But I'm hoping that individually for all of you, that these are signs of positive change for your lives and whatever that means to you. That's all for now, and there is more to come, everyone. Stay tuned, and until next time, have a great day. Stay awake, stay aware, stay safe. 
and I'll talk to you all soon.